How did you do with the first problem set? This video will cover their solutions. If you haven't given it a shot already, do try Section 1 Module 2 Problems before proceeding further. Welcome to Section 1 Module 3, The Solutions. Problem 1 essentially asks you to determine the look angle, and also the lead angle, for the given collision triangle. This is just a trigonometric exercise. The important point is not only to consider what lead is needed for collision, but also the implied look angle. We reference this collision triangle to an inertial frame, the horizon. This will be particularly important in the future, but note that presently, this collision triangle is preserved under rotation. A bit of trig shows the look angle is 14.4 degrees, giving us the answer. Let's dig a little further. If the falcon attitude, that is its orientation relative to the inertial frame changes, then the look angle changes too. So it's assumed here that the body is aligned with its velocity vector. This is not an unreasonable assumption because if not aligned, then the falcon angle of attack, that is the body orientation relative to the velocity vector, changes. Changes in angle of attack would create aerodynamic force that would pull the falcon off the collision triangle. Now, if the falcon accelerates, for example, as it reaches its terminal velocity, then the lead angle must decrease for collision. In reality, up to the point of collision, changes are being made by the pursuer to maintain a collision triangle. This is also true if the target performs an evasive maneuver or changes its course. To see this scenario in action, check out the National Geographic video of Peregrine Falcons. Keywords, fastest animal makes a kill on YouTube. For problem two, let's go back to the law of signs. Solve for the lead angle so that the pursuer velocity is in the denominator. Then we can take the limit as VP goes to infinity. The lead angle is zero. Essentially, regardless of the range, target speed, or target heading, the pursuer travels infinitely fast directly along the line of sight. There is no collision triangle. Let's discuss a little further considering finite velocities. The only other case where the pursuer would travel with zero lead angle is when the target heading is zero or 180 degrees. For target heading of zero degrees, it's a head-on collision. For target heading of 180 degrees, it's a tail chase and VP must be greater than VT. For the case of increasing target velocity, we again start with the law of sines. Solving for heading angle puts the velocity of the target on the denominator. So that taking the limit as VT goes to infinity, we find that the heading angle goes to zero. Therefore, in the case of increasing target velocity, regardless of the pursuer's state or action, collision occurs. Again, the collision triangle has collapsed and the engagement is only along the line of sight. In problem four, we needed to qualitatively and quantitatively describe the collision course in terms of the line of sight. Take a look at the collision triangle. What do you observe? Yes, it's fairly obvious. The range vector orientation does not change as time increases. And it follows then that the line of sight direction remains constant. Therefore, qualitatively, we can say that lines of sight are parallel at all instances of time.
If they're parallel, then their orientation does not change. Therefore, the line of sight rate quantitatively is zero. But zero with respect to what frame of reference? We have a couple obvious choices. The pursuer velocity vector, since velocity is assumed constant here, or an inertial reference frame. Here, we'll reference the line of sight to the inertial coordinate system, anticipating that in the future, we would have a maneuvering pursuer. The angle between the range vector and the inertial coordinate system is the line of sight angle, usually denoted by the variable lambda. Therefore, in terms of the line of sight angle, collision is ensured when lambda is constant, or lambda dot is equal to zero. Now consider that a pursuer detects a target. How could the pursuer know whether it is on a collision course and what can it do to obtain and maintain one? Assuming the time rate of change of the range is decreasing, a pursuer knows it's on a collision course if the line of sight direction does not change or that the line of sight rate is zero. Therefore, to detect, it needs to quantify line of sight rate. If the line of sight direction is changing, or lambda dot is non-zero, then from the pursuer's vantage, the target will appear to move ahead or behind. In this case, the pursuer could perform an aerodynamic maneuver to zero the line of sight rate. Note that this action changes the speed of the pursuer, and therefore, by regulating the line of sight rate, indirectly a new collision triangle geometry is obtained. Obtaining and maintaining a collision course is a feedback process involving continuous adjustment of the pursuer velocity vector. Well, how did it go? In this problem set, we found that line of sight regulation, or driving the line of sight rate to zero, was a crucial factor in obtaining a collision course. In the next section, this will become even clearer as we make a qualitative introduction to proportional navigation.